Shiraz Dyer, one of the producers of this video, is a consultant to Bausch and Lomb and Technolas, manufacturers of the Victus femtosecond laser. The ability to now image the anterior segment to a high level of accuracy has enabled use of the femtosecond laser in anterior segment surgery. This provides a major step change in cataract surgery, especially for performing precise capsulotomy as well as lens fragmentation, as demonstrated in this acrylic model. The ability to effectively fragment the lens, including very hard nuclei, allows rapid removal of the cataract. The Victus femtosecond laser performs surgery at 80 kHz and uses a curved interface with soft docking and intelligent pressure sensors to monitor forces in three dimensions. This reduces corneal deformation and wrinkles which can affect performance and accuracy of the laser. The laser images the anterior segment using online high-resolution ocular coherence tomography as illustrated. The upper image shows the posterior edge of the interface and immediately underneath the cornea. The anterior capsule of the lens is also shown here. Centration of the capsulotomy is confirmed by outlining the iris. The anterior edge of the capsule is then marked at three points in the 180 degree meridian. The posterior capsule in this meridian is also demarcated. Similar landmarks at 90 degrees are also identified. Once accomplished, another OCT image, the ring OCT, is used to identify the level of the anterior capsule by unfolding this 360 degrees. The green band identifies the width of the laser cleavage, ensuring the capsule is resected 360 degrees, ensuring there are no tags or bands. Once this is confirmed, laser ablation commences with the capsulotomy. Notice the fine gas bubbles at the level of the anterior capsule as well as resection of the capsule on OCT. Following capsulotomy, lens fragmentation is performed and in this case the lens is divided into six segments. Following successful femtosecond laser surgery, suction is then removed and the patient is transferred to the operating table. Use of the femtosecond laser requires some changes in technique from conventional cataract surgery. Conventional hydrodissection can lead to capsular distension and capsule block with posterior capsular rupture and loss of the lens, as reported by Roberts and colleagues in Australia. Although the cause of this has been attributed to gas accumulation and pneumodissection along with fluid entrapment, we believe that fusion between the denatured cortex and the anterior capsule edge produces a circumferential seal that does not allow fluid to escape. This video shows difficulty in passing the hydrodissection cannula immediately under the capsule with the cannula riding over the edge of the capsule. The cannula eventually does insert under the capsule and when fluid is injected, capsular block occurs with fluid accumulation behind the lens and anterior displacement of the nucleus. Notice how the lens pushes up against the anterior capsulotomy, widening the opening. The lens is difficult to rotate and needs to be rocked to release the fluid. This animation illustrates the phenomenon of capsular block, again showing distension of the posterior capsule and forward movement of the nucleus. For this reason, many laser cataract surgeons perform hydrodissection cautiously, or not at all, preferring to break up the lens with a chopper, releasing lenticular gas, and then shoehorning each nuclear fragment. On one occasion, while performing this maneuver and breaking up the lens with the hydrodissection cannula, fluid was mistakenly injected resulting in a perfect fluid wave with good lens mobilization. The procedure was repeated purposefully and successfully case after case. Transventricular hydrodissection was born. This discovery led to the development of a cannula which served to both chop and hydrodissect the lens simultaneously. Watch the fluid wave and displacement of posterior gas as fluid is injected into the fragmented lens incision. This animation helps to understand the process of translenticular hydrodissection. Fluid enters the lens through the cleavage plane, it goes posteriorly and hydrodissects or hydrodelinates the lens depending on the depth of the lens fragmentation. Excess fluid does not become trapped and comes out around the cannula avoiding capsule block. Without posterior pressure, the lens is easily rotated. 
to demonstrate the process of transdenticular hydrodissection again. The anterior capsule is removed using forceps. The cannula on balanced salt solution is introduced into the eye and inserted into the lens through one of the lens fragmentation incisions. Fluid is injected, resulting in a fluid wave and displacement of the posterior gas bubble. The lens is easily rotated and the cannula is used to chop the lens further. This prior hydrodissection and lens fragmentation allows rapid segment by segment removal of the lens nucleus. Effective phaco time in this case of a fairly soft grade 2 lens was less than 0.1 seconds. How does the use of femtosecond laser surgery influence ultrasound times? To evaluate this, we compared ultrasound times of our first 108 laser cataract cases to 108 cases of conventional cataract surgery performed immediately prior to introduction of laser cataract surgery at our institution. This graph illustrates the differences in average power, ultrasound time and effective phaco emulsification times of conventional cataract surgery to femtosecond laser cataract surgery. All parameters were statistically significantly lower with laser cataract surgery. To evaluate the effectiveness of transnaticular hydrodissection, we compared our first 27 cases in which hydrodissection was inadequate or not performed at all to the subsequent 81 cases. Again, there was a statistically significant reduction of ultrasound times using the method of transnaticular hydrodissection. In over 450 cases, there have been no episodes of posterior capsular rupture using this technique. Femtosecond laser cataract surgery is in its relative infancy. Perfect capsulotomies are performed with excellent lens centration. Newer techniques will inevitably evolve to maximize the benefit that this technology has to offer. Transdenticular hydrodissection is one such technique that reproducibly and reliably facilitates lens removal.